Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I'm gonna dip in on the Nintendo Switch and its phenomenal sales. Uh, the Nintendo Switch outsold the PS5 and the Xbox Series X last month during uh, Christmas. Now, a couple disclaimers here. Uh, of course, it's hard to find a PS5 and an Xbox Series X, but I'm gonna talk about Nintendo Switch sales and how amazing they've been and how it looks like the Switch is actually gonna beat the PS4 uh, for lifetime sales. Then we're gonna talk about the uh, Super Switch or whatever it is they're, they're gonna do, uh, the Switch U, I don't know what it is, the upgrade to the Nintendo Switch, and how I personally think people are picking the Nintendo Switch, even though it is a less powerful machine, they're playing Nintendo Switch because the games are good and the games are not censored like Sony's. Uh, I think that that is factoring into it because it seems like the Switch is actually picking up momentum. And uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about Animal Crossing sales too because they're freaking through the roof. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow Clownfish TV Gaming, but we do play Animal Crossing quite a bit on Clownfish TV Gaming and it can get a little, little dark, a little dark. Uh, but check it out. That is a different channel than Clownfish TV. So before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We're over 174,000 subs, almost at 175. It's much, much appreciated. Thank you. So this was a couple of weeks ago uh, from Forbes. You know, Forbes, that website you're not allowed to link to if you're on certain Star Wars forums because it's just clickbait. Uh, yeah, uh, Forbes said Nintendo Switch outsold PS5 and Xbox Series X last month and set some records for the year. So the Nintendo Switch's performance in 2020 all through the year and here again at the end is remarkable. NPD released both its December reports and its annual report today, well, this is uh, two weeks ago, and the little hybrid system topped the charts in both, attaining some impressive records in the process. PS5 came in at number two for December. We're going to talk about how abysmal the PS5 is performing in Japan, that the PlayStation brand in Japan is damaged. We've talked about that before, and i got to wonder long-term if more developers aren't going to jump ship to Switch because of it. A Nintendo Switch was the best-selling hardware platform in units and dollars for both December and the 2020 year, said MPD analyst Matt Piscatella on Twitter. Annual dollar sales of Switch hardware were the second highest for a platform in U.S. history. Annual dollar sales of Switch hardware were the second highest for a platform in U.S. history. Only the 2008 dollar sales of the Wii were higher. Software was equally impressive. Uh, while Call of Duty accounts for the top two best-selling games of the year, Animal Crossing New Horizons took three, an impressive performance from what wasn't considered a top-tier franchise until this year. Thank Brie Larson for that. No, I, seriously, I think it was just people were in lockdown and they were bored. Now, I remember at the beginning of the year, you couldn't get a Switch to save your life. Uh, you really couldn't. We wound up getting a uh, Switch Lite for... Mama Sparkles, because she wanted to play, she wanted to play Animal Crossing, and it was it was hard to even get that. Uh, the stats for Animal Crossing, however, don't include digital sales, which were likely substantial, considering it launched right at the beginning of the lockdown. So the real figure would be higher. Mario Kart, uh, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe came in at number eight. Super Mario 3D All Stars at number nine. Love that. Uh, and Super Smash Brothers Ultimate 14. Same caveat on digital sales. Uh, I seem to recall rumblings that the Switch was past its prime toward the beginning of the year, but these numbers prove that wrong handily. I would argue, too, that the console has a lot of room left to grow. It's still the most approachable ways, it's one of the most approachable ways to get into console gaming, and there are a lot more people interested in doing so given the year that was 2020. It's somewhat dependent on what Nintendo brings to the table in terms of software, uh, but with the new Pokemon Snap and Monster Hunter Rise already on the menu in the first half of the year, I'd argue things already look good. 2021 likely won't be as big of a year as 2020 was, but I can't help but feel the thing is still growing and quickly. Yeah, let's let's talk about a um, couple things. Animal Crossing sales. This is in, this is insane. Animal Crossing was always kind of a B-list Nintendo title. So look at this. This is uh, two days ago from Ars Technica. Animal Crossing New Horizons, 31 million sales are incredible. This is all the other Animal Crossing titles combined are barely over what New Horizons is. Like they they effectively push New Horizons to uh, A-list, A A-list games. 
Um, so with that comes a lot of problems. With that comes a lot of politics. You know, we've talked about the ridiculous politics of uh, of uh, Animal Crossing, how Animal Crossing was being used for politics. We had uh, politicians creating their own islands. We had the space buns drama, but it's because it's popular and uh, it gets attention. And it gets buzz. Um, this is crazy. Like we've been playing Animal Crossing since God the GameCube days. And uh, it was always a fun little game, but nothing compared to what New Horizons is, right? So now everybody's wondering what's going on with the, the next Switch console. Are they going to do a make a Super Switch? Is that what they're talking about? Uh, Super Switch? Do they need it? Nintendo, historically, doesn't rush new hardware to market unless they absolutely have to. And if the Switch is selling really well right now and people are happy with the kind of dated hardware... You know, I think I think they'll probably roll with it for a year or two. That's my personal opinion. Um, they're not in any rush, I don't think, to, you know, crap out a new system. And you look at the Switch and how approachable it is. It's portable. It's small. It's got a small profile. It's it's fairly powerful. I mean, it runs, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, higher-end PC games on it. I mean, it's, you know, the graphics are nowhere near, you know, PS4 or PS5. But it's it's decent for what it is. And it's not very big. I mean, you look at the PS5. We bought a PS5. The thing's huge. The thing's like freaking foot and a half tall. It looks like a it looks like an air purifier. You know, it's not portable. The Switch is great because you can just you know dock it on your TV and then take it with you. And uh, it's a very very easy system to get into. And it's weird because I didn't know how the Switch was going to do it first. I saw it and I'm like, I don't get it. I'm like, this is dumb. It's like, what is this? Like a like a DS, but you take the controllers off? I don't get it. I don't get it. I get it now. I actually play the Switch more than I play anything else. Um, so Nintendo is giving a non-answer when asked about the new Switch model, which means that they're probably working on it, right? Uh, they say, are they going to have a new model this year? Not planning to make an announcement anytime soon as we have Mario, uh, a Mario in February, Monster Hunter in March. Uh, hint, Nintendo chief last year said not planning to release a new model in 2020. Today's was just not anytime soon. So that means, yeah, I think it's probably coming. Um, I would guess next year. I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's, that's my opinion. But um, this is interesting. The Switch is on pace to outsell the PS4 in lifetime sales. As of December 2020, the Switch is on pace to outsell the PS4 uh, based on a based on a comparison of the two console sales in their first 46 months. It's coming from Game Rant a couple days ago. And um, I believe it. And the PS4 look is losing steam in Japan. You know, it's losing steam in Japan. That's going to hurt it. Uh, it's absolutely going to hurt it. According to a recent report from VGCharts.com, in the 46 months since the Nintendo Switch launched, its sales have outpaced the PlayStation 4 in the first 46 months of sales. From March 2017 through December 2020, the Switch sold 76.99 million units. By contrast, from November 13 through August 2017, the PS4 sold 63.33 million units. The PlayStation 4 did not reach the same threshold of sales. The Switch already has reached until month 53 after launch. Uh, over the past 12 months, the Nintendo Switch has outsold the PS4 by 7.78 million units. In fact, during December 2020 alone, the Switch outsold the PlayStation 4 by 5 million units. Of course, this is unsurprising as next-gen consoles, which include the PS5, had launched one month earlier and thereby cut into the sales of the PS4 systems. Eh, yeah, maybe. In fact, PS5's launch had also affected sales of the Switch during uh, its launch month in November 2020. One reason for such a big increase and decrease, however, is that the launch windows of the two consoles don't line up. The PS4 launched in November and the Switch launched in March, meaning the gap between their lifetime sales will vary wildly. That's that's true. Uh, that's true. But still, I think Nintendo is on its way back to the top uh, for sure. Because, look, it, it was a Sony world for a while and Sony's been dropping the ball all over the place. Uh, there's been a lot of controversy about censorship since they moved operations to California. Uh, we've been getting games that uh, did not sit well with people, like Last of Us Part Two, AAA titles. Uh, there have been controversies around Sony spying on people through the controllers with the game chat. A uh, lot of issues. And again, we bought a PS5, so I'm not saying boycott the machine or anything. 
But I'm saying that uh, the PS5 is not going to be quite the hit, I don't think, worldwide that the, the PS4 was. And we see how it's doing in Japan. It's not doing well at all. Uh, this is coming from Bounding in the Comics. And we've talked about it at length, that the, uh, the Sony PlayStation brand is damaged. Uh, in fact, you know, brand analysts in Japan are freaking out. They're like, oh my God, Sony has damaged goods. Um, nobody wants to buy a PlayStation. Now, part of it is supply, but part of it's just a general decline. I mean, you know, they've had the lowest PlayStation sales since 94 in Japan. That's when people were on lockdown. And, you know, they're on lockdown. They're not buying PlayStation. Uh, four or five and it's just like it's definitely declining so you know nintendo's in the catbird seat right now and the xbox has always been kind of a dud overseas anyway so really the playstation and the xbox are going to be western game machines basically i think at this point but nintendo is going to rule the world uh you know and as long as they stick to their guns when it comes to censorship and uh, quality and staying out of politics and just putting out consistently good products, I think they'll, they'll maintain that position uh, for sure. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We'll talk later.